folks, Joshua Johnson, uh, Principal PM with the, uh, the Azure uh, Postgres on Azure team uh, for developer experience and uh, Gen AI. So just jumping right into here. Um, so we know data is the fuel of, a, uh, of AI. You've, you've heard that probably through a couple of sessions, um, you know, and getting enterprise data ready for AI has become a critical priority for everyone. Um, and AI is only effective, as effective as its data, right? you, the data that you ground it in. So as a developer, how do you interact with your data? How do you manage your databases today? Right? And so VS Code is the, the most popular IDE among professional developers and developers who are learning to code. Right? So that was as the, the most recent Stack Overflow developer survey. And, but also what was interesting in this survey, it was found that um, today developers face uh, a lot of hurdles in managing their time effectively with 41% of developers struggling with task switching, context switching between tools back and forth, right? And then uh, additionally, developers reported that they spend up to 50% of their time debugging and troubleshooting code. So there's not much time left for anything else, right? So how do we help with that, right? We wanted to empower developers in their favorite IDE, right? Um, Postgres is recognized as the leading database for developers in that same Stack Overflow survey, right? Quite a few years in a row now. Um, and with VS Code standing out as the most popular IDE, we uh, understand the importance of meeting developers where they work in a preferred working environment. And so with that combined status of Postgres being the top database, it aligned perfectly uh, for us to you know, really combine a great set of Postgres developer tools in VS Code. Um, and it, by you know, integrating these tools, we can help with your uh, developer productivity, hopefully with your satisfaction as well. So this is live, would love to get feedback. Um, and then um, you know, have a lot of user adoption and everything. We uh, announced public preview um, and I need to update this slide because we're over 32,000 downloads as of right now. Um, and then we just announced uh, Monday. So let's, let's actually take a look at no, we're going to jump right into the, the extension here. So I've got the uh, Postgres extension for VS Code installed in my standard VS Code here. Um, and um, we're actually going to go in here and I'm going to create uh, a new connection. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Docker container. And one of the things that came up when we were uh, interviewing developers through our research was love to work locally, right? But there was a lot of issues at times of managing these Docker images and managing these deployments. And so we've made this as straightforward as possible. So making my naming my connection, setting up my password, I can save that password. It's stored encrypted uh, within my VS Code profile, right? It's not kept by the extension itself. It's locally stored and encrypted on your machine. And then I'm going to hit Create. And here, um, I didn't specify um, the image. So it's going to go out. We, we go out and grab the latest. Postgres image for you. And you can see it's in real time. It's gone out and downloaded that image and it's already up and running. And see, I've, I've specified under my Docker servers um, uh, in, in my saved connections in the Object Explorer. And so now I've got the PostGIS uh, uh, server connection. And so that'll come in handy uh, a little bit later in the demos. And so um, another feature that, that was, you know, um, definitely. Uh, asked for time and time again was uh, being able to have database context or context aware intelligence for your queries. And so as I'm typing in here, it's getting you know the context of the tables that, are, that I'm connected to to the database, giving me an example. And I can run this with uh, shift enter or hit the play button. And then I've got a quick set of results that I can filter, search, um, and then be able to uh, sort and um, export those out, save them to CSV, JSON, or Excel. And then in, in this next demo, um, I want to talk about the, tie this back to the issues with, let's say you've inherited a set of queries, right? They don't have great comments. There's no comments here, right? What, are, what do these things actually do? And so what we've done, is with our uh, PG SQL or our PostgreSQL uh, copilot, we have these context menus that are built in that do the prompts for you. And so um, just doing a quick explain plan there. 
Um, this was a, a, a saved set of queries, and so it wanted me to confirm the connection. And so I'm, I've jumped into one of, one of my Azure deployments. And then you can see the, um, in ask mode, I'm using GPT-40 here. Um, and, it, and it going through and giving me a breakdown, explaining what does it do, some business logic, uh, some of the query structure, uh, and, and then and, you know, main query, and then really starts getting into the details of the individual components of it. Um, and then it uh, gives me some functionality, and then um, you know, context for the larger query, and then um, also we'll have an option for, um, you know, tells me that it's, it's highly effective, um, you know, but could I make it better, right? So that's, that's the, the next step is, you know, what, what could I do here? So this next demo, I've taken the, the same query and we're gonna highlight this. And this, this one, even though I'm bad, I didn't put any comments into what it was supposed to do. <laughs> um, the, this one, we worked quite a bit to um, get this as, um, as performant as possible. Um, spent a lot of a lot of time, you know, uh, passing passing options back and forth. Uh, let's run this through and get a, get a performance analysis on on this. And so I get I get an execution plan summary, uh, some key performance metrics, all back from GPT four one in ask mode. And it, it does show me there's there's some potential for bottlenecks and observations there. There's some optimization suggestions even after all the time we spent trying to make this thing better ourselves, right? Um, and then, and then um, some summary of findings, right? Props to us, it gave us a, a note saying that, you know, the query was well optimized for the current data volume. It's a smaller data set, about 2,200 rows. Um, but there are issues, right, as this grows. And it immediately sees that and gives some, some recommendations as the data grows. You know, the query is performant now, but further indexing and partitioning with, will future-proof it for, for larger data sets. And I can continue through the chat and ask, you know, for recommendations for that as well. Um, but just really quickly, I get an answer as to, okay, it's good enough for now. But, but here's some, some examples of where you could do it better. And so um, tying this together, so I wanna jump into um, agent mode. I know you've, you've heard about agents, you've heard about agentic uh, 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 frameworks and all of that, um, but in agent mode, uh, we're actually going to create an app together. Um, uh, up here. And so our GitHub Copilot chat agent mode uh, provides database context aware uh, intelligent assistant that can perform multi-stage tasks, right? You move beyond the simple question and answer chat experience and allows the Copilot to bring in those additional contexts and, uh, from your workspace when wi and with your permission, it can write and debug code on its own. We, it, it's gonna ask you beforehand. So let's actually see this, see this in action. So here I'm, I'm asking the, uh, the co-pilot in agent mode um, in uh, GPT-4, uh, actually uh, GPT-4.1, to create a database on my uh, post-GIS uh, PG SQL server, um, the one that we created earlier uh, in, in Docker. And I'm asking it to create it, in, and it, it asks for permission first. And I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna have it allow for this session. So I'm not gonna have to do that over and over again throughout this. And then you can see the query that it, that it uh, executed for me. And then I've actually gone out and I've asked it to download the CSV from an open data source. So it's going to create, it's going to grab uh, the, it's an open brewery data source. Um, and it's going to give us a, a bunch of breweries that are in the United States. And it's going to uh, create and fill the table for me. And you can see the create table statement that, that it did. And then you can see the CSV in the file explorer in my workspace. The, that, it, that it created as well. And I'm gonna ask it to visualize the schema. It's a simple schema, right? It's, it's a, it, from, from a basic CSV. Um, we have some other examples of schema visualization out on the blog 
that show more more advanced. And then I'm going to ask it to, to convert the latitude and longitude columns. So, and I'm going to ask it to edit the files. So we'll zoom back out, sorry. And so it's going to convert those. And you can see that um, I have a new, col a new column called geom, for, and, it's, and its type is geometry. And I'm going to ask it, uh, what breweries are close to Philadelphia? Several of our devs are on the East Coast. Uh, I've got a lot of family in Philly. Um, and so it's, it's cool to see. And so it gives, gives us a, 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 the top 10 list there for, from our, and you can see the query that, that fired off. So now we're going to switch over to um, O4 Mini, the uh, reasoning model. Still staying in agent mode, but we can change model on the fly. And then I'm going to ask it to create that fast API application with a REST endpoint that can serve out the brewery data uh, as, uh, as GeoJSON. And as that's working. And so it's taken all the requirements that I've given and it's created a requirements text to go back and reference. And you see main.py has been created. So if I jump into there, you can see in my workspace, I've got this just created on my behalf by, by the agent. And so <clears throat> quickly, we're going to do a, um, uh, you've recorded, we're going to do main app and then we're going to reload the app. And you can see the app is available on port 8000, everything local host. And then I um, want to see from, from, the actual, um, from the actual application, um, we're going to do a quick query to, to see the, uh, the 101st record. And it says 100 there, zero to 100. So. And tying it back to for the locals here, this is a this is actually a pub here in Woodenville, uh, Washington, that that comes back. So I know that it's got data. I know that the data can be uh, pulled from a curl from my from my web app. And then we're going to ask it to build a single page web app um, that that uses this API that we just created to show the breweries on a web map. So using the PostGIS extension, I've got the geometry there, and then I can map all these things out. Then you can see the, um, it's asking me once again to, to continue in this session, because I've, I've changed over the model. And it's going to create the directory for me. Then you can see real time the updates that it's making and the changes that it's made in the main.py. And I can keep, I can undo, being able to roll back quickly, right? And if, if, say, heaven forbid, it hallucinated and gave me something that I don't want. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. And then you can see the index.html. And so we'll launch the app. Just one more second. I've got to do more, one more reload, and then we'll we'll switch to the browser. I and so and I've got a nice set of you know, breweries on a screen, I can drag and drop, I can pull these up and, you know, zoom in on, on, the, uh, on these breweries all around Philadelphia or wherever I want to go and, and view them around the United States. So, awesome. And with that, um, we've got a couple of resources out there for Learn More. Um, the, the breakouts were on demand. Um, our lab is also now on, uh, on demand. Um, it said on-site only, it'll be available. 
um, and check out our blogs. Uh, we had a lot of announcements for Postgres, tons, tons of new work uh, that, that went live this week. So thank you so much.